your patience technical difficulties on tonight listen um i am amazed at what god is doing in this season and because god is moving mightily we ought to expect disturbances like this i done sent out a uh, notification twice and i never got it and so I don't know if anyone tonight, if you received a notification, if you did not, thank you for referring to your old text and joining in. Um, I don't know what happened. And perhaps you'll get two texts <laughs> at 2 a.m., but we are here nonetheless. And I want to just take a moment to um, just start off with prayer because we've already had disturbances and I believe that God is going to minister to his people on tonight. And so anytime, thank you, Lord, anytime you endeavor to do something for the Lord, you will experience obstacles. And so Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. God, we 
thank you and we come with expectancy for what you are going to do god we thank you for the word that you will deposit in our hearts god we thank you for the prayer that will set us free god we honor you and we praise you and we magnify your name god we come against every distraction oh god of the enemy every distraction every attempt every scheme that will try to hinder your word from going forth but god God, we thank you, God, that your word is established. We thank you, God, that you will do what you have ordained for this night to accomplish. And so, God, we honor you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We honor you, God, and we thank you. Our hearts are open to you. Speak to us, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. And so if you will, turn with me in your Bibles. Go right to Deuteronomy. And if there's someone you know who did not get the notification, and I see you, Yasha, I'm so glad that you're on as well. <laughs> I'm glad that you made it on. And we missed you last week. And so those who are on Zoom, thank you for pressing your way, although you didn't get the notice. And, and I, I honestly didn't recognize it earlier because I would have gotten it, but I actually have, tonight was my last night of uh, my summer class. And so that's why I always have all this on because I have class, but tonight was my last night. So I was not paying attention to my text messages, but you are here. And so let us begin in Deuteronomy and we're starting in chapter six. And in just a moment, excuse me, in just a moment, you will understand why we are having these distractions on tonight. Uh, the word of God in Deuteronomy 6, and we're going to start from, we're going to start from uh, the, the first verse of Deuteronomy 6, the first verse of Deuteronomy 6. And I'm starting at verse one, and we're going to read down to verse nine. And it reads as follows. These are the commands, decrees, and laws. The Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. So that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you. And so that you may enjoy long life. Hear Israel and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your, our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your heart. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gate. Uh, the meaning of these instructions that we read in Deuteronomy was to make the law a part of every component of their lives so that they would not forget what God had instructed them to do. And so they would keep them distinctly in view and carefully attend to them. Uh, we learned through history that soon after they returned from Babylon, that the Jews would begin to interpret this command, the scripture that we read, literally. And they would place portions of the law written out and worn about their bodies. Uh, passages were written on strips of paint or parchment. They were then rolled in a case of black calfskin or leather, which was then put into a case. And then they will put it on their heads. <laughs> uh, you may have seen Jews today in our modern time, and they call it a phylactery. And, and you see it today worn by Jewish men in morning prayer as a reminder to keep the law. Now, 
I'm not telling you to strap some box on your head, but the idea was to think on God's law always, not to be deterred, but to remain focused. Imagine a box on your head. You would always be reminded of God's law. And so why would they have to be focused on God's law? And, and the reason why is because when we focus on God, what happens? We become more like him. When we adapt his ways, adopt his ways and adapt to his ways, we are transformed. We become more like him. Hence, whatever we focus on, that is what we become. We see the same idea in Philippians, the fourth chapter, the eighth verse. And if you were to turn there, you, you know Philippians 4, 13, where it says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But a few verses before that, in Philippians 4, 8, it says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. The idea is that whatever I think on, I will become. You get that so far? There is a principle that we see here. And the principle is this, whatever I focus on, just like whatever I think on, whatever I focus on, that's what I will become. Whatever I focus on, that is what I will produce. And so whether you say focus, being focused, or focusing, however you want to phrase it, the opposite of being distracted, and we talked about distraction, I think, some months ago. The opposite of being distracted is to be focused. Focus indicates, when you are focused, it indicates that your attention is on something specific. Something is the center of activity. There is a point of con concentration. You are concentrated on something. There is a directed attention. There is an emphasis. You are on a set direction. You fix your attention steadily toward a central objective. You center, concentrate. You, you train yourself to focus on that thing. You aim, you direct, you hone in. I hope this is becoming clear when you talk about what it means to focus. You, you point to that thing. You nail on that thing. You, you zero on and on it. You fixate on it. You obsess over this thing. You concentrate on it. You direct your, all your efforts toward it. You are purposed. You are focused on purpose. You set your sight on it. You steer. You target. You zoom in. When we look at Luke 2, and if you're following with me, if you would go to your Bibles and Luke, the second chapter, it tells the story of Jesus when he was a child. Every year, it tells, if you start in, in, verse, if you start in verse 41, it says every year, Jesus' parents went up to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival, according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it, thinking he was in their company. <laughs> I find that humorous, thinking he was in their company. They traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. Can you hear them? Have you seen Jesus last time we saw him? Have you seen him since then? When they did not find him, verse 45, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding. 
they, they, they were amazed. If we go on and his understanding and his answers. Verse 48, when his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. I want you to listen to Jesus' response. Verse 49, he says, why were you searching for me, he asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Other translations says, I, I'm a, didn't you know I was a, I'm gonna have to be about my father's business? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. We're talking about focus. Jesus was focused on his heavenly father. And he commented to his natural parents, don't you know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing? The Bible says they did not understand but there was an obvious recognition that Jesus was focused. Later in life, we see the exact same thing. If you go to the Gospel of Mark, and this time in the sixth chapter, Mark 6 and verses 1 to 3. And for the sake of time, I'll just go on. It says, Jesus left there and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were amazed. Again, remember his parents were astonished. The people were amazed and they said, where did this man get these things? They asked, what's this wisdom that has been, that, what's this wisdom that has been given to him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, a Judas, um, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. I want you to pay attention to this. We see two demonstrations of focus. In the first example, Jesus was just a boy but he was not distracted by his youthfulness and he concerned himself with his father. In the second example, we see Jesus teaching again, but the people marvel because apparently he's a carpenter. By profession, Jesus was a carpenter. By relation, he was a son and a brother. <laughs> But at, by purpose, he was the savior of the world. And he was not distracted by his career. He was not distracted by his natural profession. He was not distracted by his natural relationships. But he was focused on his ministry. He was focused on what would be the means of his glory. Jesus was focused on the Father, and he was focused on fulfilling his purpose. And I know I sound excited because I am excited about the word. And so tonight I want to ask you two questions. Where is your focus? Are you focusing on the call? Or are you focusing on everything else? Remember what it means to be focused. Just like the Israelites had that box on their head of the law, it's to hone in. It's to keep your mind continually on that thing. It's to move in it. It's to live in it. It's to do it. Jesus was revealed as the Messiah because he focused on that which he was called to do. He stayed away from that which took him away from purpose. Let that settle in just for a moment. <laughs> he focused on what he was called to do, and he stayed away from the things that kept him away from purpose. He stayed away from the things. He stayed away from the people. The only way you will make progress, women of God, is if you focus. I know we all say, I want to do this, that, the third, 
But the question tonight is, are you focused? I know we say we want to be used in, in this way and that way, and we want God's will to be done in our lives, but are you focused? The moment you begin focusing, you will see alignment come into your life. The moment you begin focusing, you will see supernatural alignment come into your life. You'll see doors open in that area. You will see opportunities open in that area. But so many of us don't encounter that because we are not focused. In your focus, you are acknowledging that God has called you to this. And in that acknowledgement, you are declaring within yourself, I'm going to be a good steward of that which the Lord has given me. I'm going to work it. I'm going to develop it. I'm going to nurture it. Matter of fact, I'm going to give God back a return on the investment he made in me. Going back to the Gospel of Luke, the 19th chapter, and just the 13th verse. We know this parable. In this parable, this master calls 10 servants, and he gave them 10 pounds of silver. And he tells them, and I like how the NIV says, it says, put this money to work <laughs> until I come back. Put this money, put what I've given you to work until I come back. And if we put ourselves in that scripture, we could hear the Lord say every gift I've given you, every ability I've given you, every talent that I've given you, put it to work until Christ returns. If we go to the gospel of Matthew, the 25th chapter, there's another parable. And in this parable, there's a man going on a journey. He calls together his servants and he entrusts them with his wealth. Uh, and verses 15 to, seven, to 18 tell us the crux of the story. It says, to one, he gives five bags of gold. To another, he gives two bags. To another, he gives one bag. Hear this. And I know you've heard this, but I want you to, I want to rehearse this, repeat this in your heart and your mind. He gives each of them the amount of bags according to their ability. And so the one that he gave five bags could handle the five bags of gold. The one he gave two bags could handle that. The one he gave one bag could handle it. And so the one who received five bags of gold, he went at once and he put to work what God had given him. The NIV says he put his money to work and gained five bags more. The one with two bags did the same thing, got two more. But the one with the one bag did not put his money to work, dug a hole and hid it. Here we see that our focus is connected to stewardship. You cannot be a good steward of anything you have, anything you possess, if you don't focus on it. If you have a home and you don't focus on your home, you can't be a good steward of it. That means you're not cleaning it. You're not tending to the repairs that it needs. You can't be a good steward of anything that you don't focus on. And here's the thing, as complicated as your life may be, scripture demonstrates that we are gifted according to what God knows we can handle. Oh, thank you, Lord. This is further demonstrated in 1 Corinthians. You know 1 Corinthians, where it talks about our gifts. What does it say when you go to chapter 12, starting at the seventh verse? It says, now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. And it talks about how to one, you receive this, and to another, you receive this. But what does it say if you go all the way to verse 11? <laughs> It says, all these are the work of one and the same spirit. So whatever, whether you have the gift of wisdom, whether you have knowledge, whether you have the gift of healing, whether you perform miracles, whether you prophesy, whether you can discern between spirits, whether you can speak different tongues, whether you can interpret those tongues, whatever the gifting is, 
verse 11 says, all these, are, all these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he distributes them to each one just as he determined. If God has given this to you, hmm, my God, thank you, Holy Spirit. If he's given it to you, and I don't know everyone that is on, and those who will listen, those who may just stream through, and if you hear this in this moment, that if God has given it to you, it's because he knows that you are able to do it. He knows that you are well equipped to do it. He knows that he put everything in you to bring it to pass. So back to the point, so that we can wrap up and go into prayer. When we focus, our focus catapults us forward. Why? Because focus is connected to stewardship. And stewardship is a biblical principle. Wherever you sow, that will you receive. Uh, there's so much more that we can talk about, but we're going to stop here because I've shared enough and, and we're going to begin to pray. But I, I believe if the Lord allows me next week, we'll talk specifically about stewardship and how we can uh, improve in the things that God has given us. How can we invest in it? How can we put it to work? But I've already shared the first step in stewardship, and that is focus. You are not a good steward of your giftings if you do not focus on it. If you don't focus on it, if you don't put attention to it, if you don't concentrate, if you don't concentrate on it, excuse me, if you don't put it to work, you are, not, you are a bad steward. If you don't do those things. And so those of you who are on Facebook, I invite you to settle your heart and your mind and to begin praying right where you are. And those who are on Zoom, I know that not everyone came on tonight because the notification did not make it out for some whatever reason. But remember, I stated that we'll understand in a second why all these technical difficulties happened tonight, though I sent out the notification twice. Uh, so multiple things happened. All week I've seen God move mightily where God has given me a word for his people. And then uh, Lydia, who you know manages the board and all that stuff, she st her train gets delayed. I recognize my text didn't go through. I go into the app, it says it sends it. I send it again, it still doesn't go through. I try to get on Facebook. All these distractions that come to interfere what God wants to do. And anytime you say, God, I'm going to focus, is, listen, you must expect distractions to come, but we know that through the Holy Spirit, we can come against every distraction. Through the Holy Spirit, we can fight against every obstacle that the enemy brings our way, and you must prevail. What did we talk about a couple weeks ago? We talked about endurance in your gifting, in your calling, in your purpose. You must endure. You must persevere. You must travail and not get sidetrack because of the distractions because distractions will come but we know that when we humble ourselves underneath the mighty hand of God when we resist the devil and we humble ourselves that Satan must flee and so those who are on with me on zoom I want you to do something that we haven't done in a while if you would just unmute yourself just for a few minutes and just a few of us who are on we're just going to begin to pray and whatever hits you tonight whatever spoke to you tonight begin praying about that whatever God has shown you begin praying about that and so I invite you come on let's begin to pray thank you God Lord, thank you Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. 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 Thank you,
Oh, Father God, I the return that I have is born of salvation and song of the Father God. That you give me to not sing in the in the right way, Lord. And I will be a good steward like you do for giving me the blessing. That I will be more focused on the Lord. I will be more focused on the Lord. Now, my heart is not in this humble thing. I will be more focused on the Lord. That you have to say, she will be more focused on the Lord. God, we think that you are keeping amongst us. God, to do good, even when we're not thinking that you are moving to the way of God. God, to do what you want to do, 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 to do what Distraction without the enemy to be able to You will have to know the people to stand and come against God in the authority of the right and not worry about the greater to be that is coming to be that is to the world. And we know the God that is for you. Jesus, for your wish. I pray for each of the women that are in the that you give to God that they can seek you, God, and just give us the full focus. God, and here are the hearers of the word. Wisdom in all the words of the word. Allow us to put us in some God without looking back. Let us stay focused to the first and the people. We don't mess up what is in the back of us. Let us know the right resource. Put people in our lives, Lord God, that are over us. Keep the mantle on us. Let us be with the people in our lives, Lord God, that will encourage us in every way. Allow us to be encouraging to others. We will be ready to ourselves. We will be ready to ourselves. To make sure that us as women, you have to unify with the Holy Spirit. Because we know we cannot be in our ministries, God. The Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us. Guide us to the word that we need. Guide us to the thing that we need. Guide us to what it is that we are to read, to study, to chew on, and to keep us focused on you, Lord. You said if you seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, all other things will be added. So it doesn't happen. So that we focus on you, Lord. If we're not focused on you, Lord. We're focused on what you it ain't Oh, yes. Lord, Jesus. David walked with you because he knew and trusted oh, that you was there. And he was able to do that, what you put in front of him, Lord God, when no one else believed that we could do it. Let us be the women of David, when nobody believes that we can do it, we can do it. In Jesus' name, I fulfill my vows, not to be seen, not to be heard, Lord God, but what is your will? That is the same power to choose and set the message of God. Your will, Lord God, your will be done. In the name of Jesus, your will be done, Lord God. Break the yokes of bondage over our lives, Lord God, that keep us put up and entrapped in the name of Jesus. Break the yokes of bondage over our lives, Lord God, that keep us put up and entrapped in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, 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 yes, L
and we don't have to worry oh about God. other people. Yes, God, thank you. you. Oh thank God, you, Lord, for fresh anointing God. this evening. Oh God, Hallelujah. You? Thank you for oh a fresh God. anointing right now, Lord God, in the name of oh Jesus. God, oh Hallelujah to your name, Lord. Your divine direction, Lord. Get the glory, Lord. Get the glory. All the glory belongs to you, Lord God. All the glory belongs to you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Get the glory in our lives, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you have set us in your word, that you have put us in your word, Lord God. You are worthy, 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 God, we continue to worship you, God, for you are worthy. For God, you are the one that called us and not we ourselves. God, you are the one that filled us with your precious Holy Spirit. God, we thank you that you are the one that's gifted us, God, with a variety of gifts. God, for some of us, you've given us five. God, for some of us, you've given us two. And for others, you've given one. And others, my God, you perhaps you've given 10. God, we thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you have looked past all of our shortcomings. God, that you have looked past all of our failures. You've looked past all of our weaknesses. God, you've looked past all of our issues. God, we thank you tonight. God, as the songwriter said, but yet and still, you still call our names, God. We have not always been faithful. We have not always been consistent. We have not always lived a life righteous before you. We have not always honored you, God, with our words. We have not always honored you, God, with our thoughts. We have not always honored you, God, by the way that we live. And God, matter of fact, God, many of us, God, have slipped into sin and seasons of our lives when we said we were called by you. But God, we thank you tonight that you are a God that forgives. We thank you, God, that you are God of a second and third and a 29th chance. God, we thank you that you are a God who keeps coming after us. Oh, God, who never lets us go too far. God, we thank you, Holy Spirit, how you draw us in. We thank you for Holy Spirit, for how you move in us, oh God, for it's in you that we live and we move and we have our being. God, we glorify you tonight because despite the upsets and the battles and the trials and the truth tribulations in our lives, we are still here. And because we are still here, you yet have a plan for us. And God, I thank you, God, that as we begin to focus on you, we will begin to see supernatural alignment come into our lives. God, for you cannot go against any principle you have established in your word. God, as we begin to be good stewards of that which you have entrusted us in, God, if we, as we begin to nurture it, as we begin to focus on it, God, as we begin to mature it, God, as we begin to work it, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. God, I pray that every person, God, those listening now, those who are praying along, and God, those who will join in at a later date, God, that every single one of us will begin to put to work that which you have given us. God, I thank you that we don't have to wait for a pulpit to put it to work. God, I thank you that we don't have to wait for a platform to put it to work. But God, you have put a mission field around us. God, our family is our mission. Our co-workers is our mission. Our friends are our mission. God, our communities are our mission. God, our neighbors are our mission. And so God, I pray in the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit, that each and every one of us God, we'll begin focusing on what you have called us to do. We focus on so many things. God, some of us focus on fitness, getting our bodies together. God, some of us focus on beauty. We want to look right. God, others of us focus on our relationships. We focus on our children. We focus on extracurricular activities. But God, I pray that you would raise up a generation of women. And God, not just women, but every man that is connected to us. God, that you would raise up a generation of us. God, 
who would be focused on fulfilling your purpose in the earth. God, that we would be focused on enlarging the kingdom of God on earth. God, that we would be focused on bringing heaven down. We would be focused, oh God, on seeing you glorified. We would be focused, oh God, on seeing souls come into the kingdom. We would be focused, God, on using our gifts that we may edify our brothers and our sisters. God, that we may be an encouragement to one another. God, I thank you, God. God, there are those who have that Barnabas gifting, that, that gifting of encouragement. God, I pray that those who are encouragers, God, that they would begin using that encouragement. God, in this season, we need Barnabas people. God, in this season, and God, we need people that would begin focusing on their gift of encouragement. And so, God, I pray over those individuals right now, those who have that gift. God, I come against the spirit of selfishness. God, that would keep them from using it for your glory. God, I come against that spirit of selfishness, God, that would keep it for themselves. God, they would keep it for those in their inner circle. But God, I thank you that tonight you are enlarging our thinking. God, you are giving us your mind. You are giving us your heart. And God, I call forth everyone with encouragement. God, in this season where there is death, in this season where there is chaos, in this season, oh God, where there is his hardship. God, I pray that every Barnabas would rise up, oh God. And as you place people on their hearts, God, that they would pick up the phone and call them and they would speak a word of encouragement over them. Oh God, as they encounter people in the public, thank you, God. I thank you, God, that you are sending Barnabas everywhere, but God, they don't necessarily know who they are. God, I thank you. God, that people tonight are coming into understanding. God, that you have gifted them to be a Barnabas in this season. God, that in this season, God, people need hope. In this season, people need to know that there is an answer. People need to know that there is one who is greater than the situation they are going through. And so, God, I pray that you would send those into your jobs. And the next time they go to work, God, they would see the complaints and they would see the issues. And no longer will they sit silently. But God, I thank you that boldness is rising up in them. I thank you that God, confidence is rising up in them, God. And they would begin to speak a word in season. Thank you, God. God, I pray that you would anoint the words that would come out of their mouths. God, that every word that they speak over people would cause for life to spring forth. God, that where there was death, where there was negativity, that life would spring forth in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I pray for every single person that is called as healers. God, this earth needs healing in this season. God, there are those who are called to heal people's spiritually. There are those who are called to heal people physically. There are those who are called to heal people mentally. God, however the healing takes place, God, I pray that healers would rise up in this season and no longer would they stay bound. God, no longer would they stay to themselves, but God, that they would begin to move in that which you have called them to do. God, whether it be at work, God, whether it be in the gym, wherever they go, God, whatever the atmosphere, God, whatever the environment, God, I pray that every healer would rise up amongst us, oh God, and that they would begin to walk in the authority. They would begin to walk in the anointing, oh God. They would begin, thank you, Holy Spirit, to do what you, God, I thank you. God, we come in contact with sick people every single day. God, I pray that bonus would come upon those who you have anointed to be healers, healers in the earth, people you have anointed to heal through them. God, I pray for supernatural boldness to come upon them even now. God, that the next time they hear someone complaining about a headache or complaining about pains or complaining about this or complaining about being depressed, God, that boldness would rise up in them and they would say, can I pray with you? And God, as they begin to pray, I thank you, Lord, God, that you would begin revealing things about those people people. And God, if they would walk in bonus, they would begin to speak in bonus and begin to speak whatever it is that you are revealing to them in that moment. God, I thank you that as we begin to focus, God, you'll begin using us more and more and more. God, some of us, God, we have questions as to why you don't use us like you used to or why you're not using us in this season. God, I pray that you would renew our focus. God, if we begin to focus, you will catapult us forward. God, if we begin to focus,
focus, God, we'll begin seeing increase in our giftings. We'll begin seeing increase, oh God, in our abilities. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh God, I pray, oh God, I pray, I pray, I pray tonight, God, for every single person, oh God, those who have been called, God, to stand in the gap for others. All of us, God, have been called as intercessors, every single one of us. But God, there are armies of people whose, whose prayer is their ministry. God, I pray that those individuals would rise up in this season and that they would begin to pray like they've never prayed before. God, as you show them faces, as you reveal to them situations, God, they won't just think on it. They won't just meditate on it. But God, that they would begin to pray it out. God, that they would begin to war in the spirit. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would rise up generals, oh God. Pray generals in your kingdom, God, who would take that mantle that you have given them and that they would pray in this season like never before. God, I pray for every speaking gift amongst us. God, whether they are preachers, whether they are teachers, whether they've had the gift of exhortation, even prayer, God, any gift that entails speaking, God, I pray that our mouths will be used by you, God, to declare your word, to declare who you are, to speak into darkness and to cause for light to come forth. Oh, God, I thank you. And God, every gift, God, those who have the gift of helps, God, I pray pray in the name of Jesus that they would begin to see their purpose in the body, that they would begin to see how they may be of assistance. God, so many of us need help, but God, I pray that every helper would rise up, oh God, that they would no longer think, well, I'm no, not valuable, or I can't, no, but God, I pray that they would begin to see that they, oh God, are mighty in God's hands. God, that there is so much that they can assist because God, if we have assistance, we can do a whole lot more. God, if we have assistance, we can go further. So God, I pray that the gift of helps will come forth in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for every prophet. I pray for every teacher. God, every evangelist, every pastor, every apostle, every miracle worker. God, everyone who speaks in tongues. God, those who interpret tongues. Oh God, I thank you. I thank you for those who are who have the gift of discerning of spirits. Those who have the gift of wisdom. Those who have the gift of knowledge. God, I pray that every gift would be known, God, amongst us, your people. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, not just those who are here right now, but in the body of Christ, that no gift would be dormant, but God, that you would raise up workers for you. God, you would wake, work, raise up people, God, who will put to work their gift things. God, help us to focus. Help us to focus, God. Give us focus. God, give us divine focus. Give us supernatural focus. God, you said that you are a good father and we ask you for anything, God. You will not withhold it. God, you said that we ask you for wisdom, God. You will give us wisdom. God, give us wisdom as to how we can focus. God, give us wisdom as to what we need to change. God, give us wisdom as how what we need to switch up, what we need to take out, what we need to eliminate. God, give us wisdom, God. Even as Jesus had a mother and had siblings, but yet he was focused on his calling. God, give us focus that though the responsibilities, Jesus had a career as a carpenter, but though he had all those responsibilities, not once did we ever see him deter from his purpose. God, give us that kind of focus. Give us that kind of focus, God, like frontlets on our head. God, give us that kind of focus, oh God, like we would run for you, like we've never run for you before, God, that we would do your will, God, like we've never done it before. God, I pray, oh God, that the authors would rise up and they would begin writing everything that you have put in their hearts. God, I pray that the videographers, God, those whom you have gifted to do films and plays and all those kind of stuff, God, that they would rise up. God, I pray that the, the gift of creativity and, and art, so God, and workmanship, God, that it would rise up amongst us and God, that they would be used of you, God. I pray for every creative person, God, every writer, God, every singer, every dancer, every artist. So God, I thank you, God, that you have gifted the body with every single thing that we need. God, I pray that every gift, oh God, would rise up and be at work. God, every church amongst us, every church represented on this live tonight, I pray that every single one of our churches would see every gift at work work like never before. God, many of us are, 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 are 
focus on one area, but we're lacking in others. Many of us are stronger in one thing, but we're weak in other. God, I pray for balance, God. I pray for realignment, God, for every gift is needed in your body. And so, Lord, we pray for our churches, God, that you would rise up workers, God, that you would rise up men and women who are focused on you, men and women who are concerned with doing your will, men and women who are concerned with seeing you glory men and women who are concerned with seeing you please God men and women who want to see the kingdom advance men and women who want to be ministers for you men and women God who recognize that we are all ministers of reconciliation reconciling this lost world to Christ and so raise us up God I come against every lie of the enemy that will speak to those and tell them that they do not know what they their purposes. God, I thank you. Your worst is that your people perish for lack of knowledge. But God, that if we search out a matter, we will find it. And so God, I pray in the name of Jesus that those who are confessing in this moment, that they don't know how you have gifted them, I pray God that you remove that veil from their eyes in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you would unstop, oh God, their spiritual ears, that they would begin to hear you. God, that they would begin to see. God, that they would begin to understand. God, that they would begin to take, the, thank you, Lord. God, I thank you. That they would begin to do what they need to do, God. Oh God, your word tells us. Oh God, if we seek after you with all of our heart, all of our might, then you will be found by us. Thank you, Lord. So many of us, God, don't know our purpose because we have not searched you out. Ah, God, so many of us don't know how you want to use us, God, because we've just been sitting there. Oh, but God, I pray that every single one of us, God, that you would stir us up in you, God. God, that you would light a fire on the inside of us and we would begin to do your will. God, I come against every lazy, every dormant, every complacent, and spirit in the name of Jesus. And I, God, I pray that we, your daughters, we, your sons, because there are sons who are listening, God, that we would rise up, oh God, and we would begin to move forward and that which you have called us to do. Remove the excuses. Every excuse, oh God, every excuse that we put before you. God, we've been, we've been using distractions as excuses. We've been using distractions as to reason why we can't. We've been using distractions as to reasons why we won't. But God, I pray in the name of Jesus, that you break that off of us. Break that off of us. God, I thank you. Oh, break that off of us in the spirit, God. Break it off of us, God. Every excuse, break it off of us. Every chain holding us to those excuses, break it, demolish it, destroy it. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus be upon us, oh God. Uh, the blood of Jesus be upon our minds. The blood of Jesus be upon our hearts. The blood of Jesus be upon our souls. The blood of Jesus be upon us. Oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would snatch those out of darkness, oh God. Those who've entangled themselves in sin and no wonder why they can't focus on purpose because they've entangled themselves in sin. God, we pray for deliverance tonight, God. We pray, God, that you would deliver your sons and your daughters. We pray, God, that you would set the captive free. God, we pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would break every chain of darkness. God, that you would, oh God, that you would break every shackle, oh God. God, every perverse, foul spirit, oh God, that they have entangled themselves in, God. We pray that by your power, you would deliver them in the mighty name of Jesus. God, that you would snatch them out of that thing. God, that you would remove the taste from them, remove the desire from them, oh God. Lord, we pray that on this night, God, that you would set them free. God, we speak over them that no longer that will they be entangled with the yokes of, uh, of bondage. No longer will they be entangled with the sin. No longer will they be entangled with the unrighteousness. But God, we thank you that by Jesus Christ, we are free. And so God, we speak freedom over every person tonight that is struggling. God, we speak freedom, freedom, freedom. God, there are those who are struggling in sin. God, there are those who want to do your will, but they are struggling in sin. And God, they do not know how to break free. But God, I thank you that God, we, your intercessors, God, we are crying out on their behalf tonight. God, that you would set them free by your power. God, we pray the blood of Jesus be upon them. Oh God, and we speak to that shackle. We speak to that chain to loose them in the name of Jesus and to 
let them go. Every perverse spirit, every perverse and foul spirit, every foul perverse spirit, we command you to let go of the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. We command you, Satan, to leave every single one of them you found, promiscuous spirit. Leave in the name of Jesus. We bind you and we command you to leave and we lose over your children, oh God. We lose over them self-control. We lose over them, oh God, deliverance. We thank you for freedom tonight, God, in their lives, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, even now that you are touching minds. God, you're doing deliverance in minds even now now you are fixing things that are crooked god there are people their minds god have been troubling them god whether it's depression or any kind of behavioral health issue any kind of mental issue god i thank you even now holy spirit that the blood of jesus is transforming their minds the blood of jesus is transforming their minds i thank you god god that there are those who've been struggling god with depression and hardship and, and they know that it's in their minds those who are who in this moment they know who, the, who this prayer is for god i thank you that in this moment you are setting them free god that you're removing that cloud they've been feeling like it's a cloud over their minds god i thank you that you are removing that cloud that you are removing it by your power in the name of jesus god i thank you that the clarity is coming god i thank you that clarity has come god i thank you that focus has come to them god that they're able to focus oh god there are those who every time they endeavor to focus the enemy raises his ugly head but even now we come against every principality we come against every demon we come against every imp we come against every satanic force in the name of jesus and we command those distractions to cease now and never to occur again we command every distraction every door that has been closed in front of us that should have been opened we command it to be opened in the name of jesus we come against every obstacle in the heavenlies in the mighty name of jesus say in the lord god rebuke you say in the lord god rebuke you oh god we thank you that there are open heavens over us god oh god we war in the spirit oh god lord we pray oh god that you would war on our behalf god those forces in hell those forces oh god that have been contending with your people blockages that have come up uh, attacks of the enemy that have come up to deter but we speak over ourselves we speak over everyone right now that those who are servants of the most high god that no weapon shall absolutely form against us no weapon shall form we defeat it now in the spirit we take the authority that you have given us god you told us whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven and god right now by the power of the holy spirit oh god we bind up every activity of the enemy god we bind up every plan of the enemy god we bind up every scheme of the enemy and we render it defeated we render it what to not it will not accomplish anything every scheme will dry up now in the name of jesus every plot of the enemy dry up now in the name of jesus every strategy of the enemy be defeated fall on your own head in the name of jesus god we thank you that we have the victory in you god we thank you that you are our battle axe you are the one that goes before us and you fight for it. you fight god for us you contend for us so god we thank you tonight Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Ah, so, oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God. <laughs> oh, God, we thank you. Ah, oh, we thank you. Come on, just be, just join me. Just join me in, in, in just praising God. Ah, oh, God, we thank you. Ah, oh, God, we thank you. Come on, if God has been ministering to you during this time of prayer, just begin thanking him. If God has been breaking things off of you, come on, just give him the glory. 
Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Ha, glory, God. Thank glory, you, Jesus. Glory, God. Glory, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for the prayer, God. We thank you, God, for the loosening, God. We thank you, God, for being free on tonight, God. We thank you, God, for removing the shackles, God. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, God. We thank you. God, we thank, thank you, God, for your mercy, your grace, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Oh, God, we thank you for restoring, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Oh, oh God, facing your mercy, Father, your love and your kindness, oh, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you for wisdom. You, Lord. We honor thank you, you Lord. for direction. Magnify you, Lord. We thank you, God, oh, for a second you. chance. Thank you, time Jesus. after time, oh, God. Thank you. We thank you, God, for giving us freedom for being yes, free, Lord. God, in you, thank God. You, Father. God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. God, we thank you tonight. We thank you, God, for the visitation of your spirit. God, we thank you for just always showing up. God, we thank you. You are so good. And God, we thank you that the plans you have for us, they are great. Help us, oh God, to focus in. Help us, God, to turn off the distractions. And help us, God, to put to work everything you have gifted us with. God, you've given us those gifts because you knew that we could do it. You know, God, that we could do it. Help us, God, to see as you see. Help us to see ourselves as you see us. Help us, oh God, to have a deeper understanding of your will, that we would obey you and follow hard after you. God, as we rest tonight, God, we pray that we would not miss, we would not wake up tired or, or groggy because we've been up with you. But God, that by your spirit, you would replenish us and that you would refresh us. God, we pray that we would sleep peacefully, sweetly, God, in you. And that we would rise up in the morning to give you all the glory and all the honor. God, we pray for those who will listen in on the replay. God, meet them where they are. May they too, God, be met as you have met us on tonight. And God, we thank you for your word. And Psalm 46, that reminds us that you are in our midst and that you will help us just at the break of day. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on and for the few of us that came on to Zoom. Thank you for keeping that number. <laughs> uh, amen. Thank you for keeping it. Amen, 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 amen. Notifications did not go out, but to God be the glory. Yes. You need God time to never to do anything. Distractions, they're mm -hmm. going to come. But you can defeat them through Christ Jesus. Yeah. Have a wonderful night. God bless. God you bless too. Good night. God bless you. Have a good night. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.